So let's now talk about diffusion impairment. So here I want to mention this equation, the fixed law equation. Are you familiar with it? Uh, it says that the diffusion of a gas depends on certain variables. For example, surface area divided by thickness of the, of the alveolus. Then there is a diffusion constant times P1 minus P2. P1 minus P2 is the difference in partial pressure between the alveolus and the arterial. Okay, so any changes in any of these variables is going to cause uh, differences in diffusion. So in this case, in diffusion impairment, what really happens is there is thickness of the alveolus, right? As a result, see the thickness is in the in the denominator, the thickness is going to be increased. So what can you say about the diffusion of the gas then? Any time you see something in the denominator, so in this case, V gas equal to A by T, right? So diffusion, so this means diffusion is directly proportional to area, right? So that means if diffusion, in, if area, surface area increases, then diffusion in, increases. And V gas, or diffusion, is inversely proportional to um, to the thickness of the alveolus. So if diffusion goes up, that means thickness is low. And in this case, thickness has gone up, and as a result, diffusion is going to be low. And this is what happens in diffusion impairment. So now it's obvious to us that in diffusion impairment, the AA gradient will not be normal because there is quite a difference between the alveolus and the capillary, right? So AA gradient is not going to be normal because the alveolar gas and the capillary blood do not equilibrate. They don't get the chance to equilibrate, equilibrate like a normal lung. So there is going to be an AA gradient problem. Another thing is that if you give these patients supplemental oxygen, their oxygen level in the arterial will equilibrate and will reach normal. That's why just measuring the partial pressure of oxygen in this patient is not a good indicator. You have to measure the AA gradient. You have to see if there is any gradient. If there is any gradient, there is diffusion problem. Giving them more oxygen might equilibrate the partial pressure of oxygen, but that doesn't mean that this person doesn't have any problem. So this that's our, that's our diffusion impairment graph. And last of all, let's talk about pulmonary shunt. So what is an example of pulmonary shunt? When we have atelectasis, that's an example of pulmonary shunt. So what happens is, since the alveolus is kind of, you know, deflated, there is oxygen here, right? But this oxygen is unable to exchange its oxygen with the capillary because it's kind of deflated. So as a result, the blood that is coming to the lung is not really reaching the lung. It's shunting back to the systemic circulation. As a result, your partial pressure of oxygen that is coming to the right ventricle, which was less than 40, is going to join the partial pressure of the systemic circulation. So it's going to be the same because it's not really reaching the lungs, at least that portion of the lungs which is going through atelectasis. But that is, but that is not to say that the oxygen concentration in the lungs is less than 100. It is 100 for the parts that is not uh, kind of uh, deflated or is not going through atelectasis. So the exchange, where there is exchange happening, the P O2 is going to be 100 because not, let's say not all of the lung is having this problem. So whenever there is exchange, there is going to be uh, PO2 in the capillaries is going to be 100 because of perfect uh, exchange between the alveolus and the arterial. But where there is no exchange going on, going on, it's just going to shunt to the systemic circulation. As a result, uh, the overall uh, partial pressure of oxygen is going to be less than the partial pressure of alveoli because even though there is some exchange going on with some parts, some parts are not giving us exchange, giving us an overall decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen.